Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. I'm your host, Tanera Garvin. We're so excited you've decided to join us today. I want to let you know that Karis Daily Live Bible Study is daily. That means you can join us every Monday and Friday at 10 a.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m., and Wednesdays at 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I also want to let you know that we are live, and so what we want to invite you to do is that while you're hearing the message today, at whatever platform you're watching us on, at the bottom of the screen, take some time and send us your questions because we'd love to take time at the end of today's message to get to answering those questions. We also want to say thank you for those who have partnered with Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College in order to take the gospel far and deep. It is because of your partnership we're able to see Karis Daily Live Bible Study continue. If you haven't partnered or if you would like to partner or if you'd like to just give or donate, you can do that at awmi.net slash give. And also, guys, I'm excited to let you know, coming up very soon, April 3rd through the 5th, we have Karis Campus Days coming up. So I just want to encourage you, those of you who've had an interest and said, hey, what is Karis all about? Or I would just like to experience <coughs> Karis. Well, we've got our Karis Campus Days April 3rd through the 5th. So come check us out here in Woodland Park, Colorado. I know you can find something that would bless you in that time frame. Well, I want to thank you again for joining us. Welcome with us, Pastor Rick McFarland. Arland. He's the pastor of River Rock Church who has come to share the message with us today. Thank Amen. you for being here. Well, thank you for having me. Enjoy this. And so I uh, have a good message for us today. So let's, I'm going to talk about your turnaround begins with words. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of us need a turnaround. And so our circumstances, relationships, our finances, our health, there's usually something that's not in line with what God's Word promises us, so there, there needs to be a turnaround. Well, where does it start? And oftentimes we're asking God and talking to God about it and, and kind of asking Him to initiate it, but He already initiated our turnaround. And so we're going to find out that, that the turnaround that God has for us starts with words. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to look at that. So let's hop right into the Word of God. Let's look at Hebrews 11. Look at verse 13. Now this verse is speaking to those of the Old Testament that received promises concerning the coming Messiah. So they didn't receive the promises because he hadn't come yet. But the principles found in this verse is the recipe for a turnaround in your life. So let's look at Hebrews 11, look at verse 13 and see the recipe for a turnaround. Where does it start? Hebrews 11:13 says, "These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, uh, they were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So I want you to see something. First of all, your turnaround is going to start with words, but it's not going to start with your words. It's going to start with God's words. Mm -hmm. And so it says they receive the promises. What, what promises? These were the ones God spoke to them. So these are promises God speaks to us. And so oftentimes we're asking God and we're asking Him to change situations, but God's already promised us the things that we need to turn it around. And so we just need to find out what has God said? What is God's words? And ask the Holy Spirit. He'll lead us in the Word of God. He'll show us what God's already said about your problem. And you need to receive the promise or the promises that God's given you. Next of all, you need to see them. And so that's where hope is. And so when the Word of God comes, faith is not the first thing that comes. The first thing that comes is hope. Hope is what our eyes of our heart will see. Yeah. And so it's important to, to see God's Word in your, in your heart. Yeah. A lot of people are trying to ask God for things, they're trying to use their faith for things, but they don't see it in their heart. Mm -hmm. And so faith will reap the unseen fields of hope. Mm -hmm. It's just like a combine going out into a field and reaping a harvest that's been sown. Well, faith is your combine going out, reaping the fields of hope. That's the things that God's shown you. You can see what God has for you. Then faith says, I got it now. I harvest it. It's mine. But if you don't see it yet, you don't have hope for it. It's not a vision on the inside. Faith can't make substance to it. And so the first thing you need to do is ask the Holy Spirit to help you see it. Start imagining it. Start seeing what God has in your heart. Next of all, it says they were persuaded of them. That's really a definition of what faith is. And so once you see it, faith says, I have it. I harvest it. I take it. It's mine. And so you become persuaded of it. And it says they embrace them. That's ownership. 
They owned it. It says it's mine. I have it now. And so, again, you need hope to develop, see it in your heart, and then you need to be persuaded of it. And then you say, no, it's mine. I got it now. And that's embracing it. But the last thing that's going to turn around your situation in the natural is you, you need to confess or you need to speak God's word. It says, and they confessed that they were strangers, pilgrims on the earth. So it starts with words, God's words, and it ends with words, your words. Let me tell you something. God speaks words to you so that you can turn around and speak them to the natural. Come on. And so uh, faith is actually released by two ways. Faith is released by actions, and faith is released by words. Words is a main way God releases His faith. In Genesis chapter 1, you're going to see God speaking. God said, God said, God said, it was so, it was so, and it was so. So God releases His faith by words. But I want you to see something. After Genesis 1, He's not going to speak directly into the earth, because before man was created, He spoke directly into the earth. He spoke to the oceans, and He spoke to the land, He spoke to the animals, He spoke into the natural world. But after He created man and spoke man into existence, He no longer, you can't find Him speaking directly to the things in the earth. Mm -hmm. He actually speaks to a man or speaks to a woman. And then the man turns around and he has to speak to the natural. Yeah. Why? Because God gave man authority over the earth. Before man was here, God exercised His authority directly to the earth. But once He gave authority to man, He no longer could speak directly to the circumstances of the earth. He now had to speak to a man, speak to a woman. Right. And then the man had to turn around and speak. That was the prophets of the Old Testament. God prophesied to the prophets, but the prophets had to turn around and prophesy to the That's natural. Right. See, God didn't speak and prophesy directly to the earth. No, He prophesied to prophets. Prophets directly spoke. Well, that's the way in your life. God's not going to speak to your finances. Come on. God's not going to speak directly to your health, to your body. He's not going to mm -hmm. speak to your relationships. No, He gives you, He speaks His promises to you and then asks you to speak them. That's right. You have authority on earth. And so God's given you His, uh, His authority and that's released in words. I want you to see something that God wants many things to be done by your words. Mm -hmm. There are some things you need to do with your actions, but there's some things God wants you to do with words. I want you to look in Colossians 3, look at verse 7. And oftentimes we just read over a verse and we miss it. I want you to read this. We're going to read it slowly and carefully. You may have to read it a couple times to get really what's being said. Look at Colossians 3, look at verse 17. And it says, what, this is the King James, Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father by Him. Well, Pastor, what is, what's about this verse that we need to see that I can overlook? Well, let's read it slower. Whatever you do in word mm. or deed, let me say it again, whatever you do in word or in deed, that speaks out that God will want us to do some things with our words, some things we're to do with our actions. And so I learned the hard way that my dishes only are done with action. <laughs> One time Joanne says, I'm going to be going out for a couple hours and I'll be back. Will you please do the dishes? I said, yes, I'll do them. <laughs> and so I decided, you know, what? I'm going to do them with my words. Mm. And so I, I just spoke, dishes be cleansed in Jesus' name. And then went right back to ESPN <laughs> watching my game. She came back a couple hours later and she said, I thought you were going to do the dishes. I said, I did. She says, no, they're sitting here. And I'm like, oh, were they not clean? Were they not clean? <laughs> but I spoke. I spoke. <laughs> It, but I found out, no, I got to actually put actions to it. But no, there's many things you're to do with words. Mm. And so uh, Jesus did things with words. Yeah. I want you to see Jesus, God the Father did things with words. Jesus does things with words. Mm. And so look at Mark chapter 4, look at verse 39. It says, and then he, Jesus, arose and, arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. He did something with His words. And so look at Luke chapter 4, look at verse 39. So Jesus stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. Immediately she arose and served them. And so Jesus rebuked the fever. It said, It. And so Jesus spoke to things. Yes, He did. So why would Jesus speak to things? Because things listen. Mm -hmm. And so you need to learn that things will listen to you. And especially when you speak God's Word. And so you need to be like Jesus. Look at Mark 11, look at verse 14. There was a fig tree one day that He showed up to to eat something off of, and it was lying to Him, and there wasn't any fruit. And, and Mark 11, 14, it says, in response to this tree. Mm. When's the la when's the when, when do you respond to something? 
Wouldn't they say something to you? (laughs) Well, it says in response to the fig tree, the fig tree was talking to him. It says, come, come, I have fruit. Come, come, eat of me. So he came and he realized that you're a lying tree. You're speaking lying symptoms. You're speaking lying words. And so your circumstances will speak to you. Your wallet will speak to you. Mm -hmm. Your health, your body will speak to you. There's things in the natural circumstances speak to you, but they're lying. And so Jesus in response said to it, Let no one eat fruit of you ever again. Basically, he said, die. Now, I don't know if he said die in Jesus' name. (laughs) I don't know. But he said die, basically, and it did. It dried up. Mm. He did it with words. He didn't chop it down. He didn't put salt on it. He didn't do anything in the natural. He did it with words. Look at, sometimes I think you need to speak to some some, uh, death to the devil's works. You need to use it with words. Matthew 8, look at verse 16. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were dis- uh, demon possessed and cast out the spirits with a word. And so there's demons, there's actual spiritual forces coming against you, and you need to deal with them with words backed up with authority. And so this brings out the fact that if you don't release your faith, it's called dead faith. Right. Dead faith. Well, what's dead mean in the Bible? Dead doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And so I think in the Western world, we bury people and so they're no longer here. So we think, well, they don't exist anymore. But no, they do exist somewhere. And so death is a separation of, uh, physical death is a separation of your spirit and soul from your body. Spiritual death is a separation of the life of God from your human spirit. But what's dead faith? Yeah. F- dead faith is a separation. You can have faith in your spirit, but it's separated from your natural circumstances. Mm. It's called dead faith. Well, how do you make dead faith into living faith? Well, you got to release Good. that faith. Release it. Re- release it into the natural where it'll do some work. And so look at James chapter 2, look at verse 26. It says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Mm. So here we have corresponding actions, but it's also without words, faith is dead. And so I want to make a statement to you. And so I'll suck the air out of your <laughs> living room, and you, oh, but I'll put it back. You can have faith in your heart for healing and still die of sickness. Mm. Well, pastor, I don't understand that. Well, look at Acts chapter 14, look at verse 8 through 10. Acts 14, 8 through 10, your turnaround starts with words. First God's words and then you speaking those words, releasing your faith. Acts 14, look at verse 8 through 10. In Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking, Paul observing him intently, seeing he had faith to be healed. Question, where did that faith come from? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so obviously Paul was speaking about healing because he had faith to be healed. So he's speaking about healing and Jesus' willingness to heal. And Paul saw he had faith to be healed. But I have another question. Mm. Was he healed in manifestation when he saw him sitting there? No, he was still sitting there like he was before. He still had the the lameness. He still had the crippleness. But he he had faith in his heart to be healed. Paul knew he needed to release his faith. He, so Paul realized he had to release his faith, and this man had to release his faith. Mm-hmm. How did they release their faith? Well, look at it. It says, Paul observing him intently, seeing that he had faith to be healed, said, Paul's going to release his faith, and he said with a loud voice. You know, if Paul didn't have faith in the situation, he would have whispered, hey, <laughs> in case it didn't case happen, so no one, he wouldn't be embarrassed. No, no, he said it with a loud voice. Yes. He shouted, stand up on your feet. Amen. And the man went and did what he couldn't mm. do before. He, he went and he, he went up. He said, Paul says, stand up, straight on your feet. And he got up and he leaped and walked. Mm. And so as soon as he went to do what he couldn't do before, the power of God hit him. And so we see Paul releasing faith through words. And you see this man releasing faith through actions. Faith must be released. That's right. Guys, you guys have faith. When you got born again, you've been given the measure of faith. You've been given the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so you have faith, but are you releasing it? Mm. Are you just complaining to God about your problem? Or are you releasing your faith in God's words? And so the above passage, we see faith is released. Look at 2 Corinthians 4. Look at verse 13. Again, how is faith released? 2 Corinthians 4. Look at verse 13. And since we have the same spirit of faith... According to what is written, I believed, and therefore I spoke. Mm. 
I believe. Now, speaking is important, but if you don't have believing first, faith needs to be there. So, there's a, uh, there's a call to confession unto faith. Mm. That's where you speak God's Word over yourself over and over and over again. That's where all of a sudden faith comes, but then there's the confession of faith. That's right. Confession unto faith and then the confession of faith. Which one has the power? The confession of faith. Mm. So, you need to have the faith first and that's when it's released that's when the power comes, the miracle comes, the turnaround comes in the natural. And so faith and fear are both released by words. You can have fear in your heart. And how, but guess what? Keep your mouth shut. When you're in fear, keep your mouth shut. Don't release it. So many people, they speak and give voice to their, fa- to their fear and release it into the natural. Mm. Fear and faith are similar principles. Yeah. And so both are released by words. Mm. And so it's very important what we say in our trial. Words are containers for faith or fear. That's good. Look at Proverbs chapter 4, look at verse 23. It says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Out of it flows the issues of life. Look at the word issues. Literally, the Hebrew says boundaries. The boundaries of your life, the boundaries of your finances, the boundaries of your health, the boundaries of your promotions, the boundaries of your natural life in every situation flow out of your heart. But where does it flow out of? Mm. Your mouth. For the out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yeah. That's where it issues out. And so, first of all, keep your heart, but then make sure what comes out of your heart is God's Word, not fear. Amen. And so, there's importance of your words. It's important what you say. Why? Because Proverbs 18.21. Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, or the authority of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. And so, notice that I've heard this misquoted for years. I always hear people saying life and death are in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say that. It says death and life. Mm. Why would death be first? Because as a human being, we're more prone to speak death than life. Our flesh speaks death more than life. That's true. And so, it's important that we speak uh, God's Word. We speak life. Amen. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. But I want to turn it around. I want to be life is spoke. Life is found in the power of the tongue. I don't want death coming out my mouth. And so the forces of death and life are released by words. Look at Matthew 15, 11. Matthew 15, 11. It says, not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of his mouth defiles his man. What brings corruption in your life? It's not so much what you're putting in, it's what's coming out. Mm. And so defiling a man is the things that's going to come out of your mouth. For what comes out of the mouth that's defiles it. the man. That's good. And so words of negativity, the words of doubt and unbelief and fear, that is what is bringing corruption. Corruption means going from one state to a worse state. Mm-hmm. What is bringing your life from one state to a worse state? What's coming out of your mouth? That's good. Jesus said that. Look in Matthew 12, look at verse 37. Jesus said, by your words you will be justified, or by your words you will be condemned. Mm -hmm. When you got born again, you got justified by words. You believed in your heart that God, that Jesus was Lord, but you confessed with your mouth that He was, that He, you confessed with your mouth that He is Lord and that He rose again from the dead. You believe something and you confess something. You spoke something and it brought justification to you. But that principle works in your life. And so it says, by your word you'll be justified, or by your word you could be condemned. Mm. Oftentimes, we are self condemned by our words. The word condemned means to be sentenced, to be sentenced. Mm -hmm. This verse didn't say, by God you will be condemned. It says, by your word you're condemned. Do you know you can speak words of condemnation or a sentence over your life by your own words? Well, you know what? I never have enough. Mm. I'm just born a loser. You know, I never, I, I just, I just can't seem to get over the sickness and I'm in bondage. I'm, I'm just so bound. I'm bound, I'm bound, I'm bound, I'm bound, I'm bound, I'm bound. It's a lot That's the worst thing to say. Yeah. Well, no, you need to speak God's Word. God's Word didn't say you're bound. Come on. God's Word didn't say that you, you have financial lack or you're a loser or you never make it. You need to stop speaking those feelings. Come on. We're speaking feelings oftentimes. Mm. And so we self-limit ourselves. We sentence ourselves by our own words. Mm. Or we can make it right. We can make it justified just as it needs to be. 
by our words. Now let's look at about how do you get the turnaround. It starts with God's words to you, but it's so important words from you. Once again, God is not going to speak directly to your circumstance. He's not going to speak to your body. Mm. He's not going to speak to your finances. He's not going to speak to your, to your uh, relationships. You must speak. Look at James chapter 3. We're going to look at how to do a turnaround today. James chapter 3, look at verse 2. James 3 verse 2. It says, For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, mm. that means that they don't, they don't uh, stumble in what they say. They, they, don't, they don't miss it in what they're saying. They don't speak outside of God's word. Mm. If anyone does not stumble in word, he's a perfect or a mature man, able to bridle the whole body. This brings out that your entire body is governed by words. Yeah. You know, oftentimes when we're, we're, we're going to go do something, we'll speak it first. Yeah. Well, you know, I think I'm going to get up and get me a nice glass of tea. And then you actually get up and follow. So oftentimes your body follows your words. Mm. And so it says, if you're able to control what comes out your mouth, you can control your entire body. Mm. Look at verse 3. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey, obey us and turn their whole body. And so here James alludes to a bit in a horse's mouth. A bit is where you control a horse. It's a little bitty thing in the mouth of a horse. And you can guide the entire body of this wild 2,000 pound animal <laughs> with one little bit in the mouth. And that just speaks of our tongue. Our tongue is something that can control our entire body. Mm. And so we need to speak God's word out of our mouth. And so this, this wild horse is kind of like the flesh. The flesh is out of control. How do you control your flesh? With your words. With your words you can control this wild beast that's out of control. I don't know about you, I don't know if you've ever been on a horse that lost control and bolted. Mm -hmm. One day I was riding a horse, it got, a fr it got fright and took off. Wow. I mean it was going full gallop and I started slipping out of the saddle. Oh no. <laughs> no, I was starting to slip out of the saddle and I almost fell off, oh, but the Kmart manager came and pulled the plug on it. <laughs> So I, I, it was something that almost killed me, but I was. <laughs> but, but your life is like a wild horse; it's out of control. How will you govern that? How you would turn that around with your words, mm. speaking God's word, and your body will follow. Look at verse four. It says, "Like also, look at the ships. Although they're so large and are driven by fierce winds, they're turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires." I see an ocean liner here. An ocean liner has a rudder, and that rudder is seen as something that's small, but it can turn an ocean liner around. Come on. And so you may have a hurricane hitting, mm. but you know what? And it's driving this ship one way, but if you turn that rudder and you keep the rudder set, you can turn an ocean liner around. It may take a little while, but you can get there. And you're, this speaks of circumstances. Mm. The wild horse speaks of your flesh, but what about circumstances that just seem that wild storm that's in your life and it just seems to be driving you one way and you seem helpless? Mm -hmm. No, you're not helpless. You're not a victim. Come you're on. in control. Amen. You just need to set the rudder of your tongue in the direction of God's Word and don't move it. Come on. Oftentimes we start speaking God's Word, but it doesn't change fast that's enough. It. And we'll flip back and start talking about our feelings or what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. And we flip back and forth and we can't get a change. If you'll keep the rudder set for long enough in the right direction, God's way, what God says, you keep speaking that, your situation can turn around. I don't care how bad of a storm you're in. You can have a turnaround. Come on. And it starts with words. It first starts with God's promises to you, mm. but then you speaking God's promises to the natural. Amen. And so, you know, the blessings of God are spoken. Mm. God's blessings. He has blessings for you. Ephesians 1, 3, that every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places has already been given to us in Christ Jesus. But look at the word blessing. The Greek word means to speak good or to speak well. Yeah. God has spoken words over you. And you think, well, God spoke it. Why isn't it happening? Mm. Well, because guys, God spoke to you so that you could speak them to your natural circumstance. Mm -hmm. He's given you authority. He's not going to speak His blessings directly to your situation. You are to do that. 
But oftentimes we just go to God's Word and we see His blessings, we see what God said to us, and we go to God speaking His Word to Him. Mm. And say, God, you said, you said this, you said this, you promised me, God. And God says, uh, He looks at Jesus, Jesus looks at the Father and says, I thought we sent that promise down to them for right? them to use. Come on. Why is it back up here? <laughs> Why did it get sent back to HQ? We sent it back for them to use it, right. but they're speaking it back to me. <laughs> no, you're to speak it to the circumstance. Come on. And so God's blessings are voice activated. Amen. Look at Galatians 3, verses 13 and 14, the blessing of Abraham. Mm -hmm. God promised Abraham, I'm going to bless you. Wherever you go and whatever you do, I'm just going to bless you, bless you, bless you. And it's by grace. But look at Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. Well, you know, I've gotten saved. I, I believe this verse that the blessing of Abraham is on me, but why am I not experiencing mm -hmm. it? Because the blessings are voice activated. It means to speak well. God's spoken to you, but are you speaking? Are you speaking well? Are you speaking what God said over your circumstance? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times, guys, let me tell you something, the problem we're having is that we try to fight the devil in our mind. Yeah. We mentally, the devil's trying to throw lies to us, circumstances to us. In our mind, we're trying to put it down, put it down. But you don't put down the devil's lies with thoughts. Mm -hmm. You turn it, you, you, you deal with the Lord, the devil's thoughts with words. That's it. You cast them down with words and you release God's blessings over That's your right. circumstances with words. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about staying out of the ditch when it comes to confessing God's word. There's some ditches that you can get into in confession of God's word. And so I've gotten into these ditches. I came out of the word of faith movement. Mm -hmm. And so there were very importance on words and what you speak and the power of it. And it's absolutely true, but there were some ditches that the Word of Faith movement got into. And so I want to look at a few of those. First of all, the first ditch you can get into, into confessing God's Word is speaking in the wrong direction. Hmm. So when we confess God's Word, oftentimes we're confessing God's Word at God. <laughs> and so we have our long list of, of sheet of paper with all yeah. these things, and we're parroting them back to God. You said God, you said God, you said rat-a-tat-tat, rat-a-tat-tat, rat-a-tat-tat. <laughs> we're machine gunning them back to God. And, and the, the more the pressure hits, the more intense we get. Right. God, you said, God, you said, God, you said. Well, hold on a second. Who are you trying to convince? Come on. He's already convinced. He sent it down to you. And again, he looks at Jesus. Jesus looks at the Father and says, we sent that down uh, 2,000 years ago right. for him to use, but they're sending it back to me. Mm. You're speaking in the wrong direction. God never says, speak my word at me. That's right. He gave you his word so you could speak it at your circuit, speak That's it to it. your mountain. That's it. Speak it to the circumstance. But we're often trying to quote it, parrot it at God, and the more intense we get, trying to get God to do something. Mm -hmm. God's already done everything he's ever going to do. He's already given you every promise. And so you need to start taking God's words to you, and they need to be promises from you. They need to be spoken from you. And so oftentimes we're speaking in the wrong mm. direction. Next of all, a ditch that we can get into is calling those things that are as if they are not. Mm. We are not supposed to call those things that are as if they weren't. Right. What's that mean? It's like, well, you know, there's a, there's a symptom in my body. Well, I have no symptoms. I have no symptoms while well, snot's coming down your nose. <laughs> so, no, it, I don't have a it doesn't mean to, 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 to deny what's actually a fact in the natural. Right. No, look at Romans 4.17. This is actually what we're supposed to do. Mm. In Romans 4.17 says, As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who he believed, God, who gives life to the dead, and God calls those things which do not exist as though they did. And so what God does, he says, you know what? I'm going to speak truth, but the natural realm, the facts aren't in existence yet. But you know what? Truth will change the facts. Facts will never change the truth, but the truth will always change the facts. And so don't deny the facts. The facts are the facts. But deny the facts that they're the final, that they're the truth, because facts are not truth. Facts are changeable. Mm -hmm. Truth is not changeable. That's right. Never changeable. So truth can change the facts. We don't deny the reality of facts, right. but we deny the ability for them to stay the way they are. That's it. Amen. And so we're going to speak God's word over them and see them 
change. Yes. And so in conclusion, what are the key thoughts that we went over? First of all, faith is released by words. And so everything you're turning around begins with words. And so it starts with God's words. And so instead of praying over your problem, telling God over and over about your problem, complaining about your problem, worrying about your problem, mm. you need to say, what has God said about my problem? Amen. Go back to the Word That's it. of God. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide yeah. you and lead you. Start writing down some promises and meditate those. And then one or two of them are going to leap off the page at you. Come on. And then you need to start seeing yourself having it. That's it. Start seeing, building that image. The Holy Spirit will help you mm. develop the image on the inside of you seeing yourself have them before you naturally have them. And then you need to be persuaded. That means, okay, now I'm in a place of faith and then embrace them. Mm -hmm. It's mine. I got that. I am healed. Yeah. I am prospered right yes. now. I got it. And then that's, you release it with your words. Mm -hmm. Start speaking it. But guys, it's not going to happen one time. Well, pastor, I confessed it three times and nothing happened. <laughs> well, you faith giant. Come on. You faith giant. You know, put, your, put a gold jacket of faith on you. <laughs> no, you need to keep speaking, keep mm -hmm. speaking. Well, how, Pastor, how long is it going to take? I don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't care how long. it. Keep God off your time clock. He's already promised it. It's done when He said it. Exactly. I don't care how long it takes to manifest. I'm going to keep the rudder of that ship. I'm going to keep it turned, and it will turn around. God said it's going to turn around. And I can make this big wild animal, I can get this thing turned around. Amen. It's just with my words. Mm -hmm. And so you need to release your faith. Amen. Stop trying to fight the mental battle. That's Start speaking good. God's Amen. word. Amen. Look over, what have you been talking the last two weeks? Mm. Just go over about your problem. What have you been saying about it? Oh, well, yeah, I've been complaining about it. Mm. Yeah, I've been talking to God about it, but you know, have I, have I been speaking God's word over it consistently? No. I have it. Well, that's why you're not having the turnaround. And that situation will go on and on and on. Just like the man sitting for all of his life sitting there, mm -hmm. he was impotent from his mother's womb. He had never walked. And he had faith to be healed, but he was still sitting there. His situations never changed. But his turnaround became, started with words. Mm -hmm. The words he heard from Paul, faith came, but then words released by Paul and by his actions actually turned the turnaround. And that's going to happen in your life. So God the Father releases his faith with words. Jesus releases his faith with words. Jesus was the spitting image of his father. Yeah. He was just like his daddy. I think that's why he spit on people. Come on. <laughs> He's like the spitting image of his father. <laughs> and so God the Father and Jesus both release their faith by words, but you're made in his image. Amen. You're to, you're to release your faith with words. Yes. There are some things you'll only can do with words. Mm -hmm. There's some things He's going to require you to do with actions like dishes. Yeah. <laughs> but there's some things that he, He's going to require you to do with words. Mm -hmm. What are you doing with your words? Are you doing negative things with your words? Come, words of fear or of faith? Mm -hmm. And then our words have power in the natural circumstances. It's the key to your turnaround. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for those that are out there today. They're going to, they understand, Father, now mm -hmm. I believe that you are not going to speak to their natural circumstance. Yeah, You've given them authority in the earth, but your words have been sent to them. Your promises have already been spoken. It's in your word. Mm -hmm. And Father, I just thank you. You're going to quicken a word, a quicken a promise to them. Their turnaround starts with words. And Lord, I thank you. They're going to meditate on them. Lord, they're going to start seeing them. They're going to mm. be persuaded of them. They're going to embrace them, and then they're going to speak them to the natural yes. circumstance. They're not going to speak them at you, trying to convince you, trying to get you to do something. No, they realize you've already done it, and you're going, they're going to speak to their mountain, speak to their circumstances, and they're going to keep the rudder of their mouth set in one direction. And it's not going to care about how long it's going to take. They know it's going to happen. So, Father, I thank you for turning situations around and that your goodness be displayed in them and I thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. 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 Man, Pastor Rick, what a powerful word. I'll have to say one of my favorite phrases that you said today was, you are not a victim, you are in control. Man, yeah. just the power of the words of our mouth and what are we confessing? What are we speaking? Are we agreeing with the truth of God's word or are we agreeing with our feelings? Yeah. That was powerful. Oftentimes word. we feel like, you know, circumstances, I, I'm out of control. I have no control over it. Look at what's happening. But God has given you control over what you say, That's over right. what you believe what's in your heart and what you say. And God's yeah. word has power.
Amen. And so you're never left as a victim, but you're the victor. Amen. I love that. We are the victor. Amen. Awesome. Well, we have some great questions that have come in from our online audience. So um, we're going to take our first question. And this one is from Denise on YouTube. And Denise is asking this question. She says, if we receive a personal word from God and know for sure it's from him, is it right to take that word as serious and as true as we do the words in the Bible? Well, the promise of God will be based in the Bible. Amen. And so even if the Holy Spirit speaks to you something, a promise to you, you but if you can't find it in the Bible, I doubt the Holy Spirit spoke it to you. Mm -hmm. Because the Spirit and the Word agree. That's right. The Spirit inspired the Word. And so you need to go back. If God says something to you, can I back it up scripturally? But you're going to find oftentimes He's going to speak right out of the Bible. I heard someone say, you know what? I asked for guidance from the Lord and all I got was a scripture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that's how the main way God speaks. Come on, amen. I, I've heard people go around, you know, you know, those people going around saying, Brother, do you have a word for me? Do you have a word for me? I'm a pastor, so do you have a word for me? I, do you have a word? Do you have a word? Sister, do you have a word? Yeah. And there's one time a young guy came up to me and says, Pastor, do you have a word for me? And so all of a sudden, said, I do, I got one. The word is Bible. <laughs> Bible, because it's filled with words from God. Amen. And so go back to the Word. And so anything He gives to you, take it seriously. If it's found in the Word, it's to you. Amen. And so meditate on it. Just don't automatically off your mind start speaking it. You mm -hmm. just need to meditate on it and then build hope on the inside. You need to see yourself yes. having it. Amen. And then I got it. And Amen. then you release your faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. And so faith is then released. It's called the confession of faith. And that's where the power comes. Amen. And so if you don't have it there, that's when the confession unto faith. Right. And so that's good to have a list of scriptures and speak them over and over again, but don't speak them at God. Right. Come on. Speak them at yourself and over yourself till you get to a place because your ear, your ears are the closest ear to your mm -hmm. mouth than anyone. That's right. And so you need to keep speaking it, meditating over it, mutter. Meditation means to mutter. Yes. To speak it slowly over and over again, meditating on it. And then, then all of a sudden faith comes by hearing. Come on. And so then you have faith. Faith is released the convention of faith. Of faith. Amen. That's when you speak to your mountain and that's when the turnaround takes place. Yes. Part. Amen. No, that's so powerful. And I love too how you opened up and answered with that when we do receive a word from God, it's going to line up with what God's word says because God does not contradict himself. Nope. And so it's a great way to also, if we feel like we have a word from God, let's gauge it to the word of God. Yeah. Right. And let's see, okay, Lord, does this line up with what you say in your word? Because I know you don't contradict yourself. Yeah. So that's good. And whatever God says to yeah. you, it's life. Amen. How do you know it's God versus the devil? Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's good theology. God's a good God Amen. and the devil's a bad devil mm. and they never change places. That's it. <laughs> God produces faith. The devil produces fear. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus came to give life and that more abundantly. And the devil came to steal, kill or destroy. Mm. So if you're hearing for something that brings fear, yeah. that's killing destruction or, or whatever, and it's not life, mm. it's not from God. That's it. And so God's word is always going to be life filled. It's going to be lead you to life mm. and it'll be positive. And so you'll always find it backed up with the word. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So we have some more questions I want to try to get to. So our next question comes from, uh, if I can say this the right way, MG Grant on YouTube. So Grant is asking this question. It says, can faith be negated if a group of people pray, but someone in the group sta starts to wobble and starts saying, if it be your will? Well, let's, let's talk about a situation. If it's what you're believing, it can't negate your faith. Amen. And if this is a, concerning you, no one has the power to trump your personal life. You have Amen. the authority over That's your good. life. Not so. No one else has authority over your life. Amen. You have authority over your life. So, so you speaking God's word um, is, is what needs to happen. Now, if someone speaks negatively over you, that can't impact you unless you start listening to them. Yeah. So it's important who you put, put yourself around. It's true. It's very important your company that you have around, especially when you're in a trial, mm -hmm. who you open yourself up to, who you're listening to. And so, yes, it can only impact you if you believe their words. There you go. And so you start having f fear, doubt. That's when you start speaking it. But again, I think one of the important things I said in this is if you're in fear, keep your mouth shut. That's it. Do, don't, don't go speak in your fear and unbelief. And so, you know what, that, I'm, I'm facing that fear, but that's not the last word. I'm only going to let God's word out of my mouth in this situation. Amen. And so it's important who you surround you with. But no, you have authority over your own life. 
You have authority over what you believe. Now let's speak over some, let's say someone else, like someone's in the hospital. Yeah. And so you're speaking life over them, but they're speaking death, so other people are speaking death over them. Mm. Ultimately, really the person with authority is the person that's sick. You can't make someone believe something. You can't make them do that. Yeah. You can pray that God would influence them. You can bind the spiritual forces yeah. over them yeah. and that someone, uh, someone would come with the gospel or the Holy Spirit can speak to them truth. But ultimately you cannot make someone believe something. Mm. God can't make anybody believe something. Right. He chooses not to. So everybody has the free will to believe and speak over their own life. Amen. Every, I love that too. And actually, I just want to say this. So we've had like three other questions come in. You just answered, which they had asked that same question of us. How do I pray over somebody else? Do I have authority to speak life and bring healing to them? So it's powerful. You just answered those questions. That's awesome. Yeah, we can speak, yeah. we can speak life over them, but they're going to have to receive at some point. That's right. And so God won't make someone believe. And so mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've actually heard stories about a relative, you know, that, that they were believing for them mm. to be healed and believing to be healed, and speaking life over them, but they end up dying. Yeah. And then they get upset. Well, I guess faith doesn't work and they get mm. mad at God. Well, that's a dumb thing to do. Let me tell you something. Let me give you a little secret of life. You'll need, you'll need this. Always, always, always stay on God's side. Amen. And when things don't look like that God's a good God or God's word is true. And the temptation is to side with your circumstances, side with what you've experienced. Never, ever, ever side against God. Come on. Always stay on God's side. You just don't understand everything yet. God's always a good God. He's never been not a good God. Come on. And he's a perfect God. He's a loving God. And so God is never the problem. And so um, we just need, Yeah. what was that, that last question? The last question that we just answered. Yeah. Um, so it was about if we were, if we we're praying together in a group and one person starts bringing in doubt. Of yeah. So oh yeah, real. someone died. Yeah. So they died and said, so, well, mm -hmm. faith doesn't work. And yeah. God, no, they have authority over their heart. Yeah. I've heard one time uh, a minister uh, said that they would go into a hospital and they would speak life, speak the word over them, and it looked like they were agreeing and they were making. Diff but they ended up dying. Mm. And it's like, what had happened there? You know, they would look at. Yeah. They were speaking God's word. I will live and not die. And then at the funeral, mm. the family member came to that minister and said, uh, he, and he says, well, I just don't understand. They were believing God. And he says, Yeah, but when you were there, they were speaking that. But when you left, mm. they were planning their funeral. And they were, they were speaking that to you or speaking to the loved ones because they didn't want to upset them. But really what they truly were believing was something else. Mm -hmm. And so you can't dictate, you can't That's dictate right. what someone else is thinking or wanting. Some people are like, you know what? They see the other side and they say, well, I want to go. Yeah. And so you have control over your life. Now you can speak God's word and you can ask, and you can bind the devil and the lies over their heart, but ultimately they have to receive for yeah. themselves. Amen. That's true. We do. We all have to yep. receive ourselves. Awesome. Well, I want to try to jump into another question we have here. So this one comes from Miroz on YouTube. And Miroz is asking the question, when do you pray to God about the situation and when do we take authority over the situation? How can you determine the difference? Yeah. So you need to go to, go to the Lord if you don't know what to do. Um, it, so you need to, I think praying in tongues is a good thing to do when you're Amen. Praying, and that's praying yes. into God. And so when you're praying for wisdom over God, but when God gives you the word, there you go. that when he gives you his word or promise, that's when you start speaking and declaring to the situation. Amen. So oftentimes we don't know how to approach it. And so oftentimes we want a formula. Okay. If this happens, then this is what I say. This is what I do. Right. But guess what? You, you can't do that way. You have a relationship. You, you can train a chicken to peck a button, peck a button and a corn pops out. Right. Peck a button, <laughs> peck a button and a corn falls out. And, and, they will, and the, that's the formula. Right. Well, you're not a chicken. Right. Amen. And so the, with every situation, Jesus never did Amen. the same thing twice. That's right. He was always, whatever I hear the father say, whatever I see him doing, I do. Whatever he says, I will say. Right. So you need to go to the Lord. It's a relationship. Go to God and say, God, what are you saying? Yeah. What have you said about this? And what you've said is what you're saying. Mm. And that's when I meditate on that. I'll get that down. And that's when I speak it. And that's when the circumstances will change. I remember a story of Kenneth e. Hagen. He was out on the yeah. road and his daughter got sick. Mm. And so uh, his wife called up and said, hey, you know, your daughter's sick. And he says, well, just... Uh, hold on and, and I'll get back to you. So he hung up the phone 
And the temptation is just to speak the word pray right now. So he says, no, he went back and throughout the night he would wake up about every hour and he would go over scriptures, go over the word. And he would meditate on it and meditate on it to where all of a sudden he got quickened what mm. the word. He got the word from the God. He got the rhema. Come on. And then he picked up the phone, called home and says, now tell, tell, she named the daughter's name. Yeah. Tell her daddy says she's healed and hung up. And within that self same hour, she was healed. Amen. And so don't just spin off the top of your head just scriptures you may know off your head. Go back over them and ask the Holy Spirit to quicken yeah, a rhema. To make it alive. A logos is all of the written word of God, but a rhema is a quickened word mm. about your situation. And so that's what you need. And that's when you speak that, that's when it's the power is released. Yeah, I love that. And I love that you said too, like we pray in tongues first, because there is such a power in as we pray in tongues and we're communing with the Father that when we say quicken, like it makes that word alive that Holy our spirit, spirit says, us. yes, this is it. Yeah. That's so powerful. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Awesome. Well, I think we, uh, we've just about run out of time. So I just want to thank you so much viewers for watching us today. And also if you've heard this message today and you said, man, you just talked about the Holy Spirit. I'd love to receive receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues. I encourage you reach out. We've got prayer ministers standing by. You can call 719-635-1111 for a prayer and they would love to walk you through receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Thank you again for watching with us and Pastor Rick, thank you for joining Amen. us. You have a blessed day. Bless you. God has a purpose for every one of you. He doesn't enforce it and make you follow it, but I can guarantee you God has never planned for anybody to be a failure. Jesus has come to set us free. He's come to set you free from death on every level. He wants to heal you. He wants to bless you. He wants to prosper you. He's not out to get you. He's out to bless you. There's going to be words spoken throughout the next three days that are going to be transformative and necessary for us to step into the call that the Lord has on our lives. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 